This is kind of an interesting Newton's Law problem. It involves a lot of different things. <clears throat> We've got a cannon sitting at the edge of a cliff. It's going to fire its projectile at uh, horizontally, and that projectile is going to land 200 meters away. We have an initial velocity for that projectile. And the cannon is going to roll backwards and recoil by one meter and then stop. And so what we're trying to find is the coefficient of friction, after all that's what's going to stop the cannon, uh, between the cannon and the ground. So we're going to have to calculate the acceleration, the stopping force, and then finally mu the coefficient of friction. So the first thing we'll do is use a little momentum analysis. So momentum is mass times velocity. So the momentum of the cannonball is its mass, which is 5 kilograms, times its velocity, which is going to be 90 meters per second. That's given. And so our uh, momentum of the cannonball is 450 kilogram meters per second. Now conservation of momentum says that the momentum of the cannon must be the same as the momentum of the cannonball, just in the opposite direction. So we know the cannon's momentum and we know its mass, so then we should be able to find its velocity. Velocity is going to be momentum over mass, which is 450 kilogram meters per second, divided by the mass of the cannon, 240 kilograms, so our um, velocity of the cannon, the initial velocity of the cannon, is 1.875 meters per second. Now let's write those values into our diagram. The cannon is going to start rolling backwards at an initial velocity of 1.875 meters per second, and when it stops, it'll have a velocity of 0 meters per second, or a final velocity. So there's a couple ways we could do this problem, but let's try it this way. The initial velocity is 1.875 meters per second. The final velocity is zero, so we'll calculate a, an average velocity um, just by averaging those two numbers. 1.875 plus zero divided by two gives us an average velocity during that trip of 0.9375 um, meters per second. And what we're going to use that for is to find the time that it takes the cannon to stop. So the time is distance over average velocity. Um, it takes one meter for the cannon to stop, um, and 0 0.9375 meters per second. So the time in seconds is um, 1.067 seconds. Now we're trying ultimately to get to a force, so let's calculate the acceleration of the cannon as it slows down. That's the change in velocity over the change in time. The change in velocity is just going to be that uh, 1.875 meters per second, because it goes to zero from there, so that's delta v, and our time is 1.067 seconds. And so if we do that um, division, we get an acceleration of 1.758 meters per second squared. Now force is equal to mass times acceleration, Newton's second law, and that's going to be the mass of the cannon, 240 kilograms times its acceleration. It's really a deceleration. Um, and so we do that multiplication and we get the stopping force, this is the force that it takes to stop the cannon, of 422 newtons. And that stopping force comes from friction. That comes entirely from friction. Now the force of friction is the coefficient of friction, mu, times the normal force. So we can rearrange that to calculate mu. That's going to be the force of friction divided by the normal force. So we already have the force of friction, 422 newtons. And we divide that by the normal force, which we didn't calculate ahead of time. So that's 240 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we just work that out, we get uh, mu is 0 0.179. And mu is unitless.